FAPA syndrome, standing for periodic fever, after stomatitis, pharyngitis, and cervical adenitis, is characterized by high fever episodes with oral aphtosis, pharyngitis, and lymph node enlargement, which last for three to six days and occur with a rather regular recurrence every three to eight weeks, mostly every uh, four weeks. Other accompanying symptoms may also be present during febrile flares, such as chills, abdominal pain, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, headache, joint pain, myalgia, and also skin rashes. This syndrome usually presents before five years of age and is a self-limited disease, even if it has been described in young adults too. Diagnosis of Papa syndrome is based on the previously published diagnostic criteria drafted by Marshall in 1987, and there are no specific confirmation tests. The syndrome has been considered a sporadic disease, though a familiar predominance has often been observed. However, we need to recognize that uh, the clinician must rely on a set of non-specific diagnostic criteria to consider that diagnosis in a little child with history of recurrent fevers. In addition, just because this is a diagnosis of exclusion, the power of Marshall's criteria uh, remains limited. The selection of patients evaluated in different cohorts in many papers has also depended on the clinical experience of the reporting physician, and the FAPA manifestations differed in frequency between the studies, suggesting that these cohorts may not represent exactly the same population of patients. Almost 10 years ago, in uh, um, uh, 2007, an international registry has been created in Switzerland by Professor Michael Hofer to describe the complete clinical and laboratory spectrum of PFAPA syndrome and to apply Marshall's diagnostic criteria to PFAPA patients from selected countries. Uh, the registry showed that the administration of a single dose of corticosteroids was generally successful in stopping the febrile attack of these patients, though from the investigation of uh, uh, this uh, uh, 300 uh, FAPA patients evaluated by Hofer, uh, it was evident that febrile flares did get closer over time. However, this very large cohort of patients showed also the inadequacy of the current diagnostic criteria and emphasized the need for validated classification tools with the aim of better classify these patients and uh, even increase, if possible, our knowledge about this still mysterious condition. Therefore, more strict criteria are needed in the future for helping diagnosis and maybe for performing therapeutic trials in children with Fava syndrome.